Yes, we're at the business end of the championships now. We have four games in the football qualifiers where the prize at stake is a place in the Super 8s. And the big one is Kenny and Galway meeting again in the Leinster Hurling Decider. Now we begin tonight by welcoming Derek McGrand, Don Grady to reflect on today's Leinster final replay. Would Galway and Kenny match the drama of last week? A watching in thrills for us are Michael Dignan and Martin Harris. He spoke of me all in the interviews, and I think it hides our guys is that ruthless efficiency that he has. You know, I, I remember the 2016 Leinster final. 13 of the Galway players played today played in that final. Not alone did he ignore the vitriolic, almost acerbic commentary after that particular game, but the winter of 2016, either by their own volition or by Michal's decision, David Collins left the panel, Fergal Moore left the panel, Eura Tanya left the panel, Andy Smith left the panel, and he just, he, he nipped the Lucas. The was really playing the game, and all action display goes left, goes right, he's a handful for any defender. He just stood there, he knew that, obviously, there, uh, in David Brooks' mind was a point, whereas I would have expected David Brooks just knock it in fast, and there might have been a goal chance on. But today, I think, as Derek alluded to there, right, Johnny Cohn minded a house a little bit, right? The ball comes out to Rich Jürgen, and he's six in the back of the night. So that's a lesson to be learned. There, right? Okay, when there's a, a danger around the square, you should be looking to what's the danger area, the central part of the goal. And John Henry and Paulie Man, you know, if they had been beat today, they'd be a bit embarrassed, but that video would have been shown. Sure. Yeah, well done to Cahal. Well, now we switch to last night's about you know the, the lower tier players, the hurlers, and uh, one of their main. Lots of soccer action this week on RTE Soccer Republic is at the earlier time of seven o'clock tomorrow on RTE 2. Then on Tuesday night, the first of the World Cup semi-finals. What a game. France playing Belgium. Coverage starts at 6 o'clock on RT2 to be followed on Wednesday night by the second semi-final. All European teams left, of course. It's Croatia against England from 6 o'clock on RT2. Sean, I know your brother-in-law, Charlie Vernon, was playing for Armagh and it was a fantastic win for them because they did look... And you're welcome back. Well, now we head to Navan for last night's encounter between Ulster finalists for Armana and Kildare, who were on the back of that big win over Mayo. Here's John Including yourself, only a few weeks ago. Yeah, it is, I suppose. Look, um, I won't take back what I said. I think a, a team of their ability, it was not good enough, the results that were being thrown up early on in the league for the last year, you know, but they're after finding confidence, belief, they're backing themselves, they're racking up serious scores. Uh, they were excellent again um, last night, you know, they've, they've gone on the road, they've beaten Derry, they've beaten Longford. So, tactically, they were brilliant because it was a different challenge. And to be able to turn that round in a week, to, they were knew they were going to come up. A lot of people said Fermanagh, what was Fermanagh's objective was to stay in the game. Kildare went for them right from the off. Everywhere on the field. It was no, one they, feature of their game that they actually, when they were in possession, they were constantly moving. Next up, we're going to head to Port Leash for the clash of Munster finalists Cork and a Tyrone side who've been cruising through the qualifiers. Watching for us was Des Curran. Yeah, Tyrone can only beat on what's in front of them. Yes, Cork were awful, and it was the manner of the defeat from a Cork perspective it was really poor. But Cork, or Tyrone still put up 320 deaths, 316 from play. Uh, they, they mixed up their game plan. Uh, they were very effective going forward. They had a, they had a mix of their, their running game, and then they tried to kick the ball Let's as well. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, like the, like the, the defending at times, Des, was, was just horrific from Cork. You can't, you can't take that away, but Tyrone done what they had to do. Uh, and you can see... One mini draw to be made in advance because we won't have rematches, so Fermanagh have already played both. The absolute war. You know, there, there's a culture down there that it's kind of half acceptable for the footballers, you know? They lack belief, they lack an arrogance. I see Steve Cork Foley, who's based in Cork. Michael Foley, the feeling is that Cork football might have... We're going to hear a lot more about that, I'm sure, over the coming weeks. It's a... You were hugely impressed with Ross Common in attack in particular. 
Yeah, it is. I, I, I was up at the match and um, I thought it was an outstanding game of football. You know, it was all the skills you want to see in the game were there. Um, and I think the way Ross Common set up was was interesting enough. You know, it was a very brave uh, team that went out in that field. They had two full back, two men inside in the full back line. They, this is the way they, they lined up. He went up and actually caused trouble. I, I, I think that with Ross Common. Put Cork on the way, and you know, the second half it was just a completely. Queen. Jackie, you'd know the Carlo hurling scene well. And this is a big reward for a lot of people keeping the game going there. Ah, yeah, it is. It's, it's great for Carlo and delighted for Maud for Colin Bonner. And, and they backed themselves against a, a Mayo team that, that was probably out in their feet at that point. The subs made a big impact for Kilgar yesterday. All of the football qualifiers, and it's Kilkenny against the champions Galway in the Leinster hurling decider. Well, Sean, three points in at the end, and Cavan kept it close all the way to the championship. Next up, Colm Cooper and Sean Cavan join us to reflect on the drama of the football qualifiers. But first up, it's competition. Mark this lad, like he's so abrasive, he's so strong. Five points in the first half, one another two frees. I don't think he actually can be physically stopped when he gets the ball. That's the scary thing about him. Um, the second lad, Darrell Fitzgibbon, scored two points in play, and when he went to centre forward, things started. Attack we felt, and that was Seamus Harnady today. Um, vitally, that goal before.